Now, as much as I love this truck, it is far from perfect. Don't get me wrong, it looks the part and it drives exactly how it should do, but with a few simple and relatively cheap modifications, you can make owning and living with one of these things a whole lot better. Because, I mean, they're all quite old now, aren't they? And they're missing a few bits that we all take for granted nowadays. So, I'm going to take you through a list of all the essential mini truck mods that I think you should do pretty much as soon as you buy yours. Some of them I've done to mine already, but there are still a few that I need to find the time to tick off. So, grab yourself a cuppa, get sat down, and let's get into it. Now these trucks, or vans, because you can do 90% of the mods on this list to those two, are getting on a bit now, aren't they? My Acti was made in 1992, so there's no surprise that it doesn't have the same infotainment display that I used to have on my M140i, and to be honest, it probably never will. But there are some things you can do to modernise the cab and make it a nicer place to be. There are also a few mods to talk about that just make your life easier, and you'll wonder why Honda never fitted them in the first place. I'm not going to be covering the Mighty Car Mods Boys wreck -It anagram in this video, I'm just sticking to the small stuff. But if you do want to find out my wheel specs, then go check out that video, because I've made a dedicated one just for that. Right. I might as well start in the cab because there are a canny few things in there that I need to talk about. It's a nice enough place to sit if you can actually get in there, but apart from the cosmetic stuff like the painted dash and the aftermarket steering wheel, there are quite a few bits in here that you might want to add or change. First off is the stereo. It's a single DIN unit and it is super easy to swap out. I'd recommend replacing the Japanese unit, which can only pick up certain frequencies, with one that's suitable for your country, and if you really want to bring it into the future, then get one with Bluetooth fitted, so you can make calls and play music off your phone whilst you're driving. Because of where it's located in the cab in the Acti, it makes it pretty awkward to fit a double DIN, or even a single DIN with a screen, so this is probably the best and cheapest option you have when it comes to changing it out, but it might differ on the Suzuki's and the Subarus. All I did to get around not having a built-in sat-nav anymore was fit a decent phone mount and just use Google Maps always, but if you're old school, just buy a map. Whilst you're on with swapping the stereo out, there's also another couple of improvements that you can make as well. Now, I'm not sure what the standard speakers sound like because these were already fitted to mine when I bought it, but I can't imagine that upgrading the 30-year-old units for more modern ones would be a bad idea. And another mod which I haven't actually got around to doing yet would be sound deadening. The road noise generated whilst driving this thing is crazy and there's absolutely no sound deadening in the cab whatsoever. By all accounts, it makes a huge difference. Just make sure whatever surface you're sticking it down to has been properly prepped because it can be a nightmare to get off. The next mod is pretty subjective because not everyone likes the way they look, but I could not recommend fitting a windshield banner enough. I've mentioned it before in a previous video that the sun visors are no good really. I was driving everywhere with them down all of the time, but you've got those little awkward gaps either side where the sun occasionally blinds you. And because the windscreen is enormous and you sat so close to it, I just found it was better fitting a banner, and that way I could tailor it to my short arse as well. For us countries that still live in the 1700s and use the imperial system instead of the far superior metric one like they have in Japan or Europe, you might want to get a GPS speedo so you know exactly what speed you're doing in miles an hour instead of having to always do the conversion in your head. This is one of the reasons that I've made this video because every time I post a picture of the interior of this truck, there's usually about four or five people asking where I bought it from. The active links to this and all of the other mods in this video will be listed down in the description. And if the links have expired because you might be watching this in a year's time, then I'm sorry, but you'll just have to go full Dora the Explorer and find it yourself. My name isn't Google. There is a hardline kit which means I can wire this into the back of the stereo, which I haven't done yet for reasons, but it also plugs into the 12 volt socket too. Just make sure that you unplug it when the truck isn't running because it'll zap your battery. Now I was going to fit a five panel rear view mirror, just for shits and gigs, but the next mod was in a box of bits that I was given when I bought the car, and that is a Broadway rear view mirror. Broadway is just a brand that you might want to search for. Essentially, what it does is give you a boost in your field of view so you literally have zero blind spots. It's just a panoramic setting for a mirror really, and it only costs the same as a few beers, so it's a must-have too. The last little mod that you'll want for inside of the cab is this 3D printed cup holder. Well, maybe not this exact one if you live in the UK. My guess is that this was designed by an American, and as we all know, they haven't invented portion control over there yet, so even the largest of McDonald's cups in the UK doesn't fit. Once I've sorted that out though, it'll be a game changer, because trying to drive with the drink balanced on your head is not easy at all. 
Now the bed behind the cab is amazing. You can take the sides completely off if you want to, but if you want to leave the sides on, then you should definitely invest in a cargo net to hook over whatever you're storing in the back. It's ideal for people like me who are doing up a house and taking stuff to the tip all the time, or if you just want to make it a bit trickier for someone to steal your bike at the lights because they've got to faff around and hooking everywhere. Speaking of unhooking, if you don't want stuff rolling around loose in the bed, you can buy these little brackets from Odd Devices. They've been designed so you can fit pretty much any size hook or carabiner you need to hold something down with through them. Absolutely ideal if you're transporting something bulky behind you that you don't want flying around. All you need is a decent set of ratchet straps and you could set up your own removal company. <laughs> They also sell the tailgate chains, so you can drop the tailgate down 90 degrees if you want to. Perfect for a truck like mine, which has an aftermarket exhaust, so it stops the tailgate from clattering it when you lower it down. Whilst I'm on about the bed, you should definitely coat it in a scratch-resistant paint. Because, I mean, well, why would you want to destroy it when it's literally the easiest thing to do? Raptor paint is probably the best option. Mine already had this stuff coated on. I'm not sure what it is, but it works. Not gonna lie, though, I'd rather have the Raptor gear on there, so that might be a video in the future. I haven't got around to this yet either, mainly because I haven't found one that's a direct fit and I'm too lazy to fabricate anything, but a roof basket is definitely on the list. It just gives you that extra bit of space that you need, and you can lash all sorts onto the frame with bungee cords like spare wheels or beers, plus it's an ideal place to mount a giant ass light bar, because the headlights are, well, they're like candles aren't they? Wind deflectors. They do what they say on the tin. You've seen them before, you know what they do. They cost a fortune to import, if you can find any. And if anyone has any that they'd like to send to me, I'd be very, very grateful because I can't for the life of me find any on Yahoo Auctions. Thank you very much. If you're smart and you really want to bring the acting into the 21st century, then how about fitting a universal central locking kit? It's not necessarily an essential mod like the title of the video suggests, but it definitely would modernise the feel of the truck and it doesn't seem that tricky to do, especially if you know what you're doing with electrics to begin with. Personally, I quite like using the key, but that might be something that you prefer to have on yours. Of course, it goes without saying that before doing any of these, you should really take care of it and make sure it's had a thorough service. I do always get asked where the body parts are from, like the roll bar, spoiler, splitter and, well, even the exhaust. But to be totally honest, I, I don't have a clue. <laughs> they were on the truck when I bought it. They're not exactly essential either. I mean, who needs downforce when you've only got 35 brake horsepower? Anyhow, that's all you're getting from me in this one. I hope you've got something out of it, and remember to check out the places that I've spoke about, like odd devices if you're wanting some parts for your Apti, rather than buying stuff from China. It's nice supporting little companies rather than child labour, innit? As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!